This problem deals with kinetic analysis of an enzyme catalyzed reaction, followed by a, a reactor design of a tubular reactor for that reaction. In some sense, it's a, a simple scale up type problem. For parts A and B, which are closely related, we're supposed to estimate the value of Vmax and the Michaelis constant in the Michaelis Minton rate expression. And the rate law for Michaelis Minton is shown here in the problem statement. We're given information for a differential flow reactor, and from this differential reactor data, we want to estimate these two constants. And we're given more data than we actually need to do that, and so we want to, to try to find some kind of average value that fits all of these data. To do that for this first part of the problem, we need to now set up a material balance in order to extract the kinetics for this michaelis minton reaction to get the kinetic parameters that we want. The nice thing about using a differential reactor is that it makes the material balance quite simple. And so we can simply say that the amount of product that we form, which is equal to the amount of product in the final stream minus what's in the feed stream. And in this case, we're not feeding any product. And so we're going to set that equal to zero. It's just equal to the reaction rate with which the product is produced times the volume of the reactor. And here things are, are simpler and we can use this, this very easy algebraic balance because the rate of reaction in a differential reactor is the same everywhere in the reactor volume. And that's because we're getting very little conversion in the reactor. And so the concentration of the reactants is not changing during the reaction. And so that's the same everywhere in the reactor. If this were an exothermic reaction, for example, properties such as the temperature if it's truly a differential reactor, can be assumed to be uniform everywhere in the reactor because we basically aren't allowing the reaction to proceed enough to liberate any heat. Because that's uniform, that lets us treat this reaction rate as a constant, and so we don't have to worry about any gradients in our reactor. The next step, really, is to take into account, we'll divide through both sides of the equation by the volume, and so we'll get that the flow rate of product divided by the volume is equal to the rate of formation of product, and then that's given in the problem statement as being the following. So this is our michaelis minton type expression. What we want to extract again are Vmax and Km. And so we know the volume of the reactor, and that's given as being equal to 5 milliliters. We are measured in several different experimental runs. We've set the concentration of the substrate, and it's going to again have a fixed value. And so just to denote that, since it's a differential reactor, I'll call this CS0. And so it's the same value throughout the reactor, and that's the initial value that's fed to the reactor. And so that is set and measured in this experiment. And for each of those experiments, we have measured the flow rate of product out of the reactor. And so our only unknowns are Km and Vmax. And therefore, we need basically two data points in order to determine all of our unknowns. But we're given four data points, and we'd like to be able to use all of those to do a statistical fit, basically, to those parameters. So use all that data so that we can have more confidence in our parameters. All right, there are a number of ways of, of actually doing this. I'll, I'll just show one where we can recognize that we could actually take the reciprocal of the relation that's shown here. And taking the reciprocal is something that is often useful when you have two terms in the denominator like this and a single term in the numerator. And so that lets us have sort of a slope and intercept form for our equation here. So we have a 1 over CS0 instead of a CS0, and then a constant term here, and a constant slope that we multiply by the 1 over CS0. And of course, we have the measured values of V over FP. All right, so let's look at how, this, how we might implement this. And this is an Excel spreadsheet where we have implemented our fit. And so I've just replicated the same data here that was given in the problem statement. And we want to plot on the x-axis our reciprocal concentration of substrate. We want to plot on the y-axis the volume divided by the flow rate of product. And so we just have equations for, for those terms in here. They involve a unit conversion from millimoles to moles in order to, to use moles throughout our problem. Those data are plotted here on these four data points, and we see that it forms a nice straight line relation so that we expect that the Michaelis-Menten model is a good model in this case. 
with a slope of 0.65 and an intercept of 0.42. And from the previous page, that intercept is equal to 1 over v max. And so 1 over v max is 0.42 in the units that are shown here, which means that we can just take the reciprocal of that number and get that v max is approximately equal to 2.4 moles per liter hour. Km over v max is equal to the slope. And so now that we have v max, we can just solve for Km by multiplying the two numbers above together um, to get a Km of being equal to 1.55 molar. All right, and so that's how we can solve for parts A and B using all four data points in this problem. Now for part C, we want to take some different conditions, so a different entering substrate concentration of 0.075 molar, and compute now, not at differential conversion, but at quantitative conversion of 50%, how much space time we need in the reactor in order to achieve that actual conversion. All right, and so to do this, again, we'll set up a material balance, but in this case, we're going to be using a tubular reactor balance instead of a differential reactor balance. One of our design equations for a tubular reactor is that the reactor volume divided by the inlet flow rate of the reactant is equal to the integral of dx over the negative reaction rate integrated from 0 to x. Because this problem asks about actually the space time that's required, we'll do a change of variables here, and this volume over molar flow rate is equal to the space time over concentration. Here we just use the fact that the molar flow rate of S entering the reactor is equal to the total volumetric flow rate times the concentration of S, and the volume over the total volumetric flow rate is equal to the space time. All right, so this is what we actually want to solve for. We're given the inlet concentration of substrate of 0.075 molar, and so now we just need to, to plug into the right-hand side of our expression. Are we already know the form of R sub S? which is just the michaelis menten form, so we can plug that in here. All right now, we need to be able to integrate the concentration of substrate with respect to conversion. We'll do that simply here. So we can separate the two terms, the two additive terms here, and we'll get a Km over Vmax Cs, where the concentration of substrate is equal to the initial concentration of substrate times 1 minus x. All right, that's based on the fact that this is a liquid phase reaction, and therefore the volumetric flow rate won't be changing during the reaction because it's an incompressible fluid. And so the concentration of the substrate should vary um, in a linear way with conversion. All right, our second term, once we collect terms, does not have a substrate concentration in it, so we just have this 1 over Vmax. And we will need to integrate this expression with respect to conversion. And we should mention that the conversion that we're going to integrate to is 50% or 0 0.50. If we integrate these two additive terms, we get the classical natural log form here. And that's all equal, again, to the space time divided by the concentration of substrate. All right now, we have all of our unknowns specified here except for tau. The concentration of the substrate is given in the problem statement as being 0 0.075 molar. We solved in the first part of the problem for Km and Vmax, and so we can just plug in all of those to solve for a tau value. And we calculate a tau value of roughly half an hour of reactor space time that's going to be needed to achieve a conversion of 50% under these kinds of feed conditions. So to sum up this problem, we see that we can use kinetic data for a differential reactor that is not in itself industrially useful because you're converting so little reactant to product, but what's useful is that it lets you assume that the reaction rate is uniform everywhere in the reactor, so that the analysis of the experiments is straightforward. And then we actually took those kinetic parameters um, in order to design a reactor that could be useful, that would achieve a quantitative conversion of 50%.